Okay, everybody, what we're going to start with is the original style of York Dumbbell. The blob is called a Fat Man Blob. The reason that it's called a Fat Man Blob is because this is the widest of the York Dumbbells. Okay? This is a 100 pound York Dumbbell. You can see back here it says York. And I also have one that has been cut right here that says York. Now, the quickest way for you to tell whether or not one of these dumbbells is the original style dumbbell. If you have nothing else to compare it to, you just roll it over. And what you want to do is you want to look at the York side. Okay, so this is the number side. You can see there's no USA stamp here and there is no USA stamp here. This is a fat man blob. Okay? We can look at the bottom of this one. This is a fat man blob. There's no USA on the bottom. Now I can grab one of what we call the next generation blobs and you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. On this blob, we have a USA stamp. Okay? So there's the difference right there. It's only on the York side. I've seen lots of videos out there where, where someone will lift a blob and then it, it'll be the 100 side. They'll roll it over to be no stamp there and they claim it's a fat man. That's, that's not the truth. If you're going to go by the USA stamp, it's got to be the York side. Alright, so let's go ahead and take measurements. And we'll go ahead and use the uncut blob. So I'm going to take a measurement of the very top of the blob. You can see it's zeroed out. And at the very top, the width is 100 centimeters. So let's go in inches. 3.964 inches at the very top. All right. Three point, I move it in just a little bit. 3.93. All right. Now, as it slopes out, it's a little bit tougher to measure, but as it slopes out, it gets to about the point where, that's about right, 5.805 inches. All right, so that's the slope. Now, what I can do is I can take the fat man blob off. I'll get an uncut next generation blob. Here's a next generation blob, totally uncut, 100 side, York side. Go ahead and roll it over, you'll see no USA stamp on the 100 side. Like I said, you've got to look at the York side, and there's the USA stamp. So this is the next generation. All right. The story I've heard from Richard Soren is <coughs> that they just simply created a new version of the dumbbells at some point. When they did that, it was slightly different. Now there was one other change to highlight, which I will in just a moment. But let's get the measurement on this blob as well. At the top, we're looking at about 3.91. 5, 3.915, sloping out to 5.44. So the difference is very small in the change, but that difference is large enough to make lifting one of these blobs much easier than a fat man. Okay, that extra slope is very important. And it's most important because the, the, the bigger slope is on the, the thumb side, okay? So what I mean by that is, and I can show you best if I bring the other dumbbell up. I don't know if this will appear very well, very easily on the video, but, all right. So the handle sides are here, 
and then the non-sand handle sides are here. So generally what you do in order to get a better grip is you put your thumb on the non-handle side because it's slightly straighter. But the bowing here, the, the slope, you know, the bulge is much larger on the fat man. That makes it much harder for you to pick the fat man up. Okay, so this would be the fat man. This is the next generation. Maybe you can see just by looking the difference in the size. Even though it's not huge, I mean we're not talking about a matter of inches here. We are talking about enough difference that it makes a huge difference in, uh, in how well you're able to pinch it. Alright, so now let's look at a couple of other implements that are out there that are very similar to these blobs. Okay, what we have here is the Fat Man clone. There's also an implement that's called a Blob 50, and it will actually say Blob 50 across the top. First, the Blob 50. The Blob 50 was produced by Gordon Vizecki. He produced a mold from a blob. I believe that blob was a next generation blob. This is the Fat Man clone. This was molded from a Fat Man blob. So what you have here is a, a training tool, an implement, made after the Fat Man blob and it actually came out larger than the Fat Man blob. Let's take some measurements and we'll see. So at the very top, we're looking at 4.08. Let's check to make sure that was zero. Yeah, 4.076. Now, widen it out, we'll get a look at how, how much it flares. And we're up at 5.98. Huge difference. Huge difference. So this implement actually comes out tougher, more difficult to lift than the Fat Man itself. It's also heavier. So I looked back in my records and I believe this was actually like 57 pounds. The Fat Man blobs are often heavy. So even though they're supposed to be half of a 100 and you would think that they would be around 50 pounds, they actually end up being sometimes 52, 53, or 54 pounds. So they're a little heavy. This ends up being even more, even heavier and more difficult to lift. Now let's look at some of the training implements. I wish I had a Blob 50 here, but I do not have one in my collection. I hope someone watching this video can take a measurement of their Blob 50 and I'll, and I'll, uh, I'll set it up so everybody can see the comparison as well right here on this video. That right there is the Blobette. That was produced by PDA. This video, uh, this implement is the Stronger Grip Blob. It's from StrongerGrip.com. So, there's the difference. Now, the Blobette, Stronger Grip Blob. Let's take a look at a comparison. So here is the next generation blob. You can see that the next generation is larger than the stronger grip blob. You can see that the PDA version is almost identical. Put those side by side for just a moment. Very, very close. Now, you may not notice on the camera, but something that you can pick up on right away is that the edges here are much sharper than the edges on the dumbbell. Uh, this would give you a much better grip, if you will, because you can dig your skin in a little bit better, get a better hold on it than you would be able to for the earth blob. However, I'm sure this is still a, a perfectly good device to train on if you have one. It's shot loadable. You can see the Allen screw right here. You can remove that. And there is some shot in there. This is on loan from Tony Spinillo. 
He's actually the only guy I know that owns one. He was nice enough to let me borrow it. This is the stronger grip lob. This is also shot loadable, so you can remove this and put shot in there. But it also comes with a loading pin. The loading pin screws right into the bottom of the stronger grip blob. Now, let's look at the let's look at the size comparison between the stronger grip blob and the next generation blob. You can see that the stronger grip blob is much smaller, but I'll tell you, because of its severely rounded edges, this is actually a lot harder to lift than you would think. It looks small, but because the edges are so rounded, you can't dig your thumb in at all and get and get that bite on the edge. Okay, so this is smaller than the than the next generation blob, and it's smaller than the than the PDA blobette. But the difference is. You can get a really good dig on this one, you can't on this one. So this is actually very, very hard to lift, and I haven't done any lifting with this yet. Let's take some measurements. PDA blobette. Across the top, we're looking at about 4 inches, 4.006 inches. As we slide down, as an estimate, we're looking at... 5.841 inches. Okay, so there is some sloping, some widening. Now, where are we going to take a top measurement here? I guess it's just up to me to decide. So we can say that's 2.87, but the most important thing, I guess, would be the actual furthest width, which is looking about. 5.157. So this is a great deal narrower than the actual blob. But I'll tell you, this is a grip strength builder for sure. Because you cannot get a good bite on there with your hand. There is no way that you can hinge your skin against the side or, or anything like that. So if you have one of these, you have a device that's going to give you really good grip strength. Uh, the most that I recall using on the stronger grip blob was only 25 pounds added. I'm not exactly sure how much this implement weighs without any weight added to it, but I doubt I have lifted 50 pounds on this total implement and weight added. So just goes to show, you know, I, I can do a next generation plus 20 pounds and I can't even get 50 pounds on the stronger grip blob. Then the last thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to measure the, the handles. Okay, so let's say someone sell, wants to sell you a blob that is actually half of a York dumbbell. Alright, so what we can do is we can take a look at the handle cutouts. Uh, that one is not so easy to see. So if someone has a blob and they want to sell it to you, and let's say they are the number side. The number side is never going to have the USA stamp on it. So just because you see one that doesn't have USA, that doesn't mean anything because you need to look at the York. So this is how you can test it. Go ahead and just, we'll, we'll, mic, we'll mic the handle here. What we're looking at there for the di diameter of this handle is 1.137 over here one point one three two okay one more over here actually this time I might have gotten a little bit better of a measurement, it's 1.111 over here. One point one three. So slightly narrower. 
Let's go ahead and measure measure the handles themselves. See what differences we can come up with. Okay, the original York, let me just make sure that's zero, yep. One point zero five eight. Next generation, one point one two. One point one two. One point one two. Okay. This is one point zero eight. That was one point zero five. One point zero five. 1.05 so on, on the second measurement is 1.05 so there is a difference in the handles and the original style is going to be smaller so there you go there are some things that you can look at if you're looking at blobs if someone has one you know you can use these measurements to help you decide whether or not you have a fat man if all they have is a 100 side it's real easy if they have a York side because it's going to <clears throat> it's going to have the either USA stamp or not. That's your your best indicator. If you don't have it, if you have a hundred, then your best indicator is going to be the handle width. All right. So I hope this video has been helpful. This was a video that was requested by Gary Gray, one of my longtime customers at DieselCrew.com. So. Thanks for sending that in, Gary. You're not the only one that's asked. And uh, sorry it took me so long, but I hope it's been helpful. Any other questions related to this stuff, guys, please feel free to leave a comment. And uh, I think that should pretty much take care of it. All right, thanks, everybody. We'll see you.